welcome, sorry for the delay, welcome to um, the live panel uh, here at the Anthropology Museum at the University of Queensland. Happy National Anthropology Day everyone. It's uh, the first National Anthropology Day in Australia. The Americans have been celebrating them before, but we're, we're now also celebrating them. Um, with a panel uh, on engaged anthropology at UQ. We've got an amazing panel, and I'll get them to introduce themselves in, in a second. Um, but we've got a real mix of um, people. Um, everyone's an anthropologist, but at different levels. Uh, we've got an honor student, a PhD student, um, three of us working as anthropologists. And we're going to tackle some of the questions. So if you have questions, here in the live studio audience, or the live museum audience, you can ask us directly. Just raise your hand and we'll We'll answer your questions. If you're online watching this on Facebook, just pop your question in a comment underneath and um, we'll, we'll get that fed to us and we'll answer your questions <coughs> in real time. So, let's start with the panel. Maybe if you just introduce yourself, your name and what your research area is. Thanks Gerhard. I'm Sally Babbage. Uh, I'm an anthropologist at UQ. I, te I, do, I teach and I also do research. My research is I'm interested in, I, uh, in, in broad terms, I'm interested in the global politics of uh, global indigenous politics. Um, and what that means is I'm interested in the way in which indigenous people in different parts of the world um, are, uh, use uh, that or uh, uh, use that identity in their political negotiations over land um, with resource developers. Uh, in, in negotiations with the state and so on. And so I'm interested in the way, for example, in Chile, where I work in northern Chile, indigenous people negotiate with mining companies um, and, and what their experience of that is. And I came to these kinds of questions because I started as an anthropologist about 20 years ago, um, working on Aboriginal land claims and recognition of territory and country in Australia. So as an Australian anthropologist, uh, I started with these questions about the recognition of Aboriginal people in Australia and what that means for us as uh, Australians, but also how Aboriginal people, Australian Indigenous people experience that process. Um, and then I started thinking about what do those same sorts of questions mean for people in other parts of the world. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm Deanna Romano and similar background to Sally in that I um, started doing native title work after I finished studying anthropology and I did that for a number of years and now I'm a PhD student here. And my work is looking at um, Indigenous recognition in Cape York Peninsula, so in far north Queensland, and similar sorts of questions about how Indigenous people are leveraging their newly found rights, or newly recognised rights, um, in terms of land, in terms of um, who they are as a collective people, um, and what they can do with that, and what that means for people. So that's sort of the crux of it. Okay. I'm Jenny Munro. Um, I'm also an anthropologist here at UQ. Um, my work mostly at the moment is really around um, uh, health and anthropology. So I'm um, interested in how people understand health and well-being in different ways um, from different cultural perspectives. Um, and I'm also interested in how um, culture and other things shape how disease actually spreads or the prevalence of disease. So we know some, some diseases are more common in certain populations than in others. And so culture actually um, is one of the things that um, influences the prevalence of, of disease um, in different populations, people. So I work in West Papua, um, in the most, most eastern part of Indonesia. And um, I also work in a few other parts of Indonesia and some other areas of the Pacific. But, so in Papua, I'm mostly interested in especially HIV and reproductive health. There's quite a lot of political considerations around how people are experiencing those problems and um, the ways people are trying to um, improve their health and respond to some of the challenges in their, in their area. Um, so I'm Leela Ford. I'm an honors student um, at the moment at UQ. Um, and my research more specifically is concerned with um, the women's movement that's a part of the Kurdish revolution happening in Rojava in the region of northern Syria. 
um, and the way that they're choosing to represent themselves, especially on social media. A lot of what I'm looking at um, concerns a sort of broader picture um, that anthropology can look at um, around uh, political questions of um, security uh, and communities building security and what that looks like for different people, uh, particularly around women and women-led uh, initiatives. So yeah, sort of looking at these different um, political ideas and ideas around security for communities. Thanks, that is really I've introduced myself. Yeah. I'm Gerhard I'm also an anthropologist here and I work mostly with refugees in, in Malaysia. Um, but the first question I sort of want to get to is why, why is anthropology important? Or why do you think, you know, the, what is the importance anthropology brings to the work that you do? Or why is anthropology the, the way to do the work that you do? Um, anyone want to get involved in, in that one? Okay. <laughs> well, partly this panel was about engaged anthropology, right? and it's it's almost it's almost like it, in some ways it's not necessary to say that anthropology is engaged, seeing as the the core kind of business of anthropology often is is listening to people, and that is a form of uh, a direct form of engagement, um, and because anthropology has always been defined by the field and field work and the way in which we we do seek to listen to people um, and we seek to listen to whatever we're studying and get close to and I say whatever rather than as well as whoever because also anthropologists work with archives and records and anthropologists work with materials we're in at the moment we're we're talking in a in an anthropology museum we're also interested in the way in which the materials themselves can tell us stories. But mostly we talk to people mm. and that itself is a form of engagement and it's, and it's a particular way of listening to human experience I think that's important for anthropology and, and, and the stories that people themselves tell about their worlds and that's to me is a kind of represents engaged anthropology. Mm. Mm. No, I agree with everything Sally said as well. Um, for me I suppose two things, so one thing is the context, so we're really interested in spending time in people's places and communities, um, getting to know people a bit better, and that lets us see how whatever issue we're interested in is connected to many other different kinds of issues. Um, and that's, a, I think, a fairly uniquely anthropological view on things. So in my work, for example, you might think that where women choose to deliver their baby has very little to do with you know, surrounding politics or political conditions. You might think, oh, it's just a matter of go to the doctor or go to the hospital. Um, but by being there and spending time with people, I'm able to see how some of their decisions, for example, around where to have babies um, are linked to bigger political issues or bigger economic um, structures and things like that. Yes, yeah, so I think that's one of the main ways that it matters in my, in my work. Yeah. I'll just add to that that I think there's a lot to be said about understanding people's perspectives and people's how people make meaning. So, um, you know, to understand where someone is coming from, you need to sit down with them and, and chat one on one um, and be around the way that they live, understand where they're coming from. So, um, you know, in order to understand that, we need to really put ourselves on the same level equally as others. Um, and that's something that anthropology is very good at doing. So, um, for my research, it's actually uh, a little bit um, different in uh, the question of how to uh, have that engaged element of anthropology, and I think it in part shows the way that that can um, transcend even having that physical presence with people, um, because I am looking at a, uh, a group of people who are in a zone of conflict that's very hard to access. Um, and I'm looking at the way that they're presenting themselves to the world through social media and the media that they're producing. Um, and the way that, that uh, the way that anthropology is helping with that is again, this capturing of experience of uh, different voices, different experiences, and particularly those on the margins that might challenge some of the assumptions that we have. Um, so a lot of what I'm looking at is 
um, actually challenging some of what uh, other areas um, around political science, especially in conflict studies, have uh, gotten from what they've seen, um, the representations that they've looked at, where they've particularly focused on the way that other people are seeing um, the women fighters that I'm looking at. Uh, whereas I'm with anthropology, it's something that um, very much is trying to capture the voices of the people that it concerns um, and their experiences right down to even um, the way that it affects um, how they see the world, how they act and exist in the world. Um, and it's even allowing me to see some of how uh, those different representations the different ways of being are captured in the photographs that they share, in um, the stories that they're choosing to tell. So I think it can still be engaged even transcending that. But. Yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. And, and, and you know, context, listening, uh, talking about field work, that kind of mm -hmm. key method um, that is integral to anthropology. Um, but field work can be in an online mm -hmm. space, not just in a physical space. So we, mm -hmm. you know, lots of different spaces that we interact with. And one, one question, though, that often comes up in this context of engaged anthropology that you talked about, Sally, mm -hmm. is, you know, what is the role of the anthropologist? Is the anthropologist an activist, you know, out there representing the people they work with, uh, and or is the anthropologist an observer, um, dispassionately writing about somebody else? And I've kind of made a caricature of those two positions, but I think it's often an, um, two positions that people see anthropology within, either one or the other. Um, so I'm wondering in your work, what kind of position do you take on um, when you're working in, in the field? Right, well, let's see. There's lots of different ways to answer that question. I think that's partly why it's interesting and tricky. Um, I guess, Which is an anthropological yes, thing, right? We it's, love it's tricky too stuff. too complex, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to ask a simpler question. Um, I think for me, in a way, you can, if you are fully engaging with people's lives and their experiences and their points of view, um, it's hard not to have some investment in their, their situation, their fate, their circumstances in many cases, whatever that might be. Um, I think also though that, if, for me anyways, if I am overtly um, dedicated to an activist kind of publicizing of the particular political situation, for example, in my field site, then that kind of cuts out some other aspects of the story. So the political kind of um, activist narrative can take over um, the story and erase or eclipse some really interesting stuff that is um, is not overtly captured by political activism and also the ways that what we might consider political activism can be quite differently defined and practiced locally so how I might think of it what an activist is could be completely different in the local context where I work where simply you know um, asserting the right to have health services in my own in, in an indigenous language for example could be considered quite controversial in a form of local activism that I might um, equally support, but it's different than a big scale kind of political um, agenda, I suppose. Mm. I don't know if that's a clear I'll point. Echo what <laughs> Jenny said, I mean, partly because of the way we work as anthropologists and we, we, we speak to people, we're using our bodies, we're using our our whole self, our friendships in a sense, and, and our kind of relations with other people to, to listen and to ask the kinds of questions that we ask. And so that means that we are implicated in the places that we're doing research and that itself has a kind of politics. But choosing then to, um, to take up one or another cause um, as a result of that, I think is um, for me, it's not something that you necessarily choose as a path as an anthropologist, but you might, um, it might come up as a necessity from the relations that form through fieldwork. Um, so, for example, as I think Deanna can probably talk about the native title context or the recognition of Indigenous um, country under Australian Commonwealth law and the process of anthropologists being involved in that which is very much not on it, it where you, the anthropologist serves the court and is expected to be um, as uh, a report on the empirical report on the evidence that they find in society and culture 
about those matters. Uh, in other kinds of field work that I do, for example in northern Chile where people are negotiating with mining companies, they're more, you know, at times in the field they have put me to work for a community cause, um, doing analysis of company documents or doing analysis of uh, political uh, kind of dynamics in order and, and legal documents in order to inform community processes for activism or they've invited me to join a protest against certain things and so there are there are aspects of activism that are involved in that kind of field work but it's not driven by necessarily my decision it's my choice whether I say yes to those invitations but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily and I think it um, in some ways echoing kind of what Jenny said it, it, if you make a decision about a particular political line, sometimes if you're interested in the broader and, 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 and various viewpoints on a particular topic or issue, then as an anthropologist you miss all of those, mm -hmm. all of those, that range of things. So. Mm -hmm. just, just a quick reminder, if you have questions in the room, ask. Now, <laughs> if you have questions and you're watching online, just put in the Facebook comment and uh, and we'll try and answer it. One of the early questions that came and it relates to this um, is around what kind of influence anthropologists have, right? So we're all anthropologists; we all think we're very important, um, but do other people think so too? Um, so one of the questions was, how can anthropologists influence government policy um, or or policies more broadly? Um, which, which relates to, you know, what's the value of anthropology um, in, in broader society. So maybe mm -hmm. we'll, we'll maybe start with you, Diana, and, mm -hmm. and, and go around in terms of how you see anthropologists and their role uh, in broader society. Mm. Um, well, t just connecting that question to the previous one, I think it's important in terms of us as anthropologists understanding where we stand in the scheme of things. You know, we can we have to be realistic about what we can actually achieve um, if we do take on an activist cause, for example. Uh, what are we actually capable of doing with our position? Um, and so that speaks to larger issues about whether we can actually influence government policy or not, uh, for the better, for the worse, how our, how our work might be taken or misconstrued even, which are really important questions. And, you know, there is anthropology that is used to certain ends or has been used to certain ends that might not um, be according to what the anthropologists themselves wanted their work to be used for. Um, but there are occasions when anthropological work is really necessary to critique certain things, you know, critiquing certain policies where they see that the effects are detrimental on the ground to people or that things are much more complex than how, um, you know, things are legislated for. So there is a, there is a role for us to, in, as anthropologists, in the work that we do in understanding the on the ground what's happening on the ground of applying that and saying, well, things could be done differently and asking those questions about how things could be done differently. And that's where the influence on policy and on broader ideas can really take shape, I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, with anthropology, it's especially interesting because there is a lot of, uh, there has been a lot of critique of past anthropology. It's something that anthropologists freely admit that um, the discipline has uh, come a long way, has done a lot of development, um, and has had to uh, really uh, address a lot of uh, problematic origins. And in doing so, I think um, you can see the way that anthropology has developed methods and concepts that are particularly designed to better understand difference in a way that is more open-minded and um, is more aware of uh, where research is coming from and the political place that it's coming from and the political place that it's going. And I think that's something that um, all researchers and all anthropologists um, need to keep in mind as well and do keep in mind. Um, and that's a particularly political element. Um, I see anthropology um, in part through my research, but more broadly as well, as being uh, a discipline, an area that can offer these experiences that it captures and um, that are captured using these methods to um, 
allow the researcher and the people who are reading this research to challenge their own ideas about the world um, and use it as a test um, against some of the theories that are developed in other disciplines and other areas. Um, psychology, the rest of the social sciences, um, in my case, political science and conflict studies. Um, and I think sometimes uh, to do that, a researcher has to be quite open to challenging themselves as well. Um, but I think that's one of the most important parts that anthropology can play, is really bringing those voices and a lot of voices on the margin to light um, that can challenge that and be a bit of a test for what we think we know about the world. How, how do you think um, anthropologists uh, are, are valued in, or their contributions are valued in, in a place like Australia where there's a specific field around native title where anthropologists have a, a particular role to play, but, but more broadly, what, what's your take? Or is there a country in the world that you might work in, like Chile uh, or, or elsewhere, or, or Indonesia, where anthropology is, is very valued um, in terms of providing answers to major questions that people are facing? I think in Australia the value of anthropology has waxed and waned at different times, and um, it goes back to um, public policy and different alignment of the discipline with public policy and certainly in Indigenous affairs in Australia in the way in which anthropology has been harnessed to, to different um, kinds of government policies um, uh, has, has been important and also and difficult as well for the discipline because of people's different opinions about, you know, other anthropologists' opinions about um, the effects of that government policy for Indigenous communities and Indigenous peoples and our engagement with Indigenous peoples and Indigenous communities about the effects of working within those kinds of policies. So uh, in that area for Australia, I think that's a really big question that, 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 is, that has a range of different opinions from the people that we're working with um, in terms of community and the people that we're working with in terms of government um, agents, government officers or um, representatives of different kinds. So uh, I, th I think in, in some ways it, it, it sort of, you know, there's a move at the moment, for example, that's slightly different, the where anthropologists are, are being used in the, in the private sector more to diagnose and think about consumer and digital um, uh, relations between between people and and computers and and electronic um, the electronic world. <laughs> I'm being <laughs> inarticulate about this, as though I come from a different generation. But there's <laughs> technology, <laughs> that technology thing, that where that thing out there. But, um, but you know, this, the, I, I think you know, anthropologists put themselves to work, harness themselves as well as people go looking for, as Lena was saying, go, go looking for ways to rethink. Um, and anthropology is one of the, the places that people look. Sometimes. A lot of head nodding, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe a follow-up question to that is, um, where, where do you think anthropology can take people, right? If people are new to anthropology and kind of go, well, I might not have heard of anthropology and, you know, what's, wh not what's in it for me, but what can I do with an anthropology uh, course or degree? What, where, can it, where can it take me? Uh, and, is, I mean, it's, it's partly interesting that we have a panel and only one of us, or kind of two of you have worked outside of a university, is that? Mm -hmm. Have you worked outside of university, Jenny? No. No. So yeah. So so maybe we can. We, we'll, we'll focus on you two. <laughs> Diana, you, you tell us where can anthropology take you apart from the university, which is a fantastic place to, to work as an anthropologist. But not all anthropologists end up there. Mm. Um, what are sort of other places that anthropologists mm. um, can find employment, but also fulfilment uh, in, in mm. their work? Uh, well, I mean, I was working in native title, um, so. Um, it's a native title service provider, which is the organisation that I worked for, and the role was um, basically to do research to support native title claims uh, in southwest Queensland, mostly where I worked. Um, and while well, that physically took me to lots of places around Queensland, even outside of Queensland, to, to interview people, to do research, um, 
But in terms of organisations, you know, like that's one example of where people can work. Um, you know, there are other people with anthropology degrees that I know who are working within government, for example, in, in things like policy, um, and they're bringing that sort of anthropological view to the policy work, to the research, um, and they're bringing, you know, they're researching in order to inform policy, and so that anthropological skill uh, is being used in terms of finding alternative stories out there to help inform policy from within government, right? Um, and so, you know, that's also quite a broad application. Uh, there's people who work for NGOs, all sorts of different things. Um, so it can be broad, and I think the key is that it's really about you learn a set of skills and you learn you learn about how to think a certain way and how to talk to people in a certain way and how to ask certain kinds of questions that uh, broaden the world and broaden your understanding of the world and importantly about people's relationships um, to themselves, to each other, to different kinds of communities, to different kinds of ideas, to the environment, to politics, to the economy, all sorts of things. So, um, and about understanding how people make meaning, how people uh, think certain things are important, why people behave a certain way, um, what, why people value certain things over others, certain ideas, ideologies, etc. So in terms of applicable skills or ways of knowing, I feel that it's something that is infinitely useful, right? And in terms of its actual application, um, we can be creative in how we can apply anthropological skills and anthropologists are being employed across a whole range of different organisations. Um, so the question is how valuable can we make ourselves to the outside world to see us in that way? <laughs> Hello. <Right? laughs> yeah. I was just going to say I haven't worked in a particular organisation, but I have done bits and pieces of work internationally for people like the UNDP, mm -hmm. for what used to be called the Canadian International Development Agency, for Australia's DFAT. So these kind of bits and pieces of um, work where maybe a development program has happened in Indonesia and someone wants to know what were the effects of it, talk to people who were in the community, or someone wants to design a program to deal with a health issue or a violence issue or an economic issue in Indonesia. Perhaps I've um, reviewed what they were planning to do and tried to inform um, the, the program design, that sort of thing, yeah. That's other options. There are, sorry, Gerhard, there are, there are anthropologists involved in organisations like Engineers Without Borders, mm -hmm. so anthropologists informing, mm -hmm. um, informing about how to, how to think about these kinds of physical infrastructural mm -hmm. things in, in, and the ways in which those have, uh, have cultural implications. There are anthropologists who study our programs here at UQ who are, doing who are doing an anthropology major with a mathematics major, who are doing it with an engineering major, who are doing it with theatre and costume, who are doing anthropology with, uh, with you know, other, other majors in, in the arts program, like Leela, who, who um, also majored in political science. And, um, and all across the university, um, people are taking anthropology courses, partly because we're living in a world where cultural diversity is is constantly in front of us and anthropology helps us think through um, what that really means and what kinds of you know that it's not just about oh yeah we look different and see the world different but what implications does that have for um, for, for all sorts of things in daily life now the questions are piling up but if there is a pressing question um ask now. There is one, okay, how could anthropologists help with the huge immigration issues which are currently dividing Europe and threaten the very core of the EU? Wow. Um, that's a question for you. <laughs> yeah, that's a, and that's a really big question, the very small amount of time that we have left. Um, but suffice it to say there are lots of anthropologists in fact working um, and have been working for a very long time um, in Europe um, on these issues, and I think one of the issues you just raised is about cultural diversity, right? Um, this is not a new issue, and there's lots of anthropological knowledge, and I think part of the challenge is to make that anthropological knowledge um, available and digestible to policymakers and to uh, society more broadly. And I think anthropology and anthropologists can probably do a bit more in taking, taking our knowledge, and we have vast amounts of knowledge about how to not, maybe not solve the migration issues, but how to um, make it better. Um, 
but it's about getting that information into um, into society at large. And I think that's one of the key challenges that we're still working on: um, how to influence policymakers and how to uh, work with policymakers um, more effectively. Uh, that's already happening, um, but often anthropological fieldwork or work, by its very nature, takes time. And policymakers often, because of very short-term limits, right, need answers now. And we might say, well, if you give us some money in three years' time, we'll be able to give you lots of solutions. And that might be uh, an impediment to, to sort of quick fixes that often politics uh, demands. Um, now we're drawing to a close. And I'm really worried about the time. We have so many interesting things. But <laughs> one of the questions that, that was really integral was, you know, why does the world need more anthropologists? There's already so many of us. Um, what can anthropology bring to the table? And you've kind of answered through all of these different questions, given us lots of answers about, you know, the benefits of anthropology, self-reflection, providing more context, and that you don't have to become an anthropologist to be able to use anthropology, mm -hmm. right? You can, the application of that toolkit that mm -hmm. anthropology provides is immense. And so, Everybody come and study anthropology. Uh, it's really important. Um, any concluding remarks? Um, sorry to kind of <laughs> boil everything down, but um, you have to go teach in a minute. So any sort of concluding remarks will we'll, we'll come back this way. Leila. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it has um, sort of been said um, and summed up really well about what anthropology can contribute. Um, and I. I think on one of the earlier questions, I was going to add um, that a few weeks ago, uh, I found out that there had been an interview with one of the people who um, recruits for Apple, um, who had been asked what they, what is the thing that they look for that makes people stand out when they're hiring people, and it was um, having an anthropology degree. Uh, because, and he was saying that it, there's just something about the way that anthropologists think, uh, something creative <laughs> in the way that they think, in the way that they um, approach issues uh, and problem solve. And I think that's something, um, as has sort of been said and hinted at, that not only for uh, incredibly important uh, policy issues and political issues, but just in everyday life, there are things that um, Anthropology can teach us about what we think we know and how to better approach the world in a way that is more open and is um, transformative for the better, I suppose. Yeah. And we're, the time is up. And what a beautiful, <laughs> what a beautiful remark to end yeah. on, Leela. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you for being part of it. And um, see you next time.